Hi, this is Lee Garrett and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. Today, I'm going to cover the second part of our deep dive into Parallels Desktop, the virtualization solution for Mac OS that allows you to run different operating systems from within the warmth and comfort of your Mac. In part one, we looked at the different installation methods for Parallels and focused heavily on how to share content between Mac OS and the virtual machines. In this video, we're going to finish looking at how Mac OS and your Windows machine can share resources such as input devices, hardware and networks, as well as cover how to back up our machines, protect our data and optimize performance. We're also going to look at how to create templates of virtual machines for easy creation and duplication as and when new machines are needed. So lots to cover once more. Let's get started. So just to set the scene in front of you, we can see my Windows 10 virtual machine. It's called Lee G Win 10. And it's in exactly the same state as it was when we finished the last screencast. I haven't made any configuration changes. I haven't touched it. I'm currently sharing my home folders between my Mac and Windows machine. And if I open up the configuration window by going to Actions, then Configure, I'll just move it up a little, make it a little bit neater. There's confirmation here that the home folders are indeed being shared. And I'll go down to more options to show you that I'm also sharing my clipboard. Now, the next thing I want to look at how sharing can be configured relates to our input devices, namely the mouse, the trackpad and the keyboard. Now, Parallels Desktop lets you configure these devices to work just the way you want them to within Windows. And you can also use trackpad gestures to control Windows applications just as you can with Mac OS ones. Those of you who are familiar with Windows already will know that right clicking is everywhere. And by default, Parallels Desktop will execute a right click when you press Shift and Control and then click the mouse. It's therefore important to ensure that we know how to configure Mac OS to carry out a right click or in Mac OS parlance, a secondary click. To do this for either a trackpad or mouse, we need to go into System Preferences for Mac OS. So I'll just go to the Apple menu for this click on system preferences and I'll click trackpad. And from within here, tapping on secondary click presents us with a few options. So choose the one that suits you best. I always go with the default of two fingers, but you may prefer to just configure one of the corners of the trackpad for right clicking. I'm just gonna go back and select mouse. Again, click on secondary click to enable this right click functionality and select whether you want to click on the right or the left hand side. So now we've had that refresher on how to configure right click options on Mac OS. Let's go back and close this system preferences window and take a look at our Windows desktop. I'm using a trackpad and not a magic mouse. So if I hover over the shortcut here to the Mac files folder and tap on the trackpad with two fingers, which is a right click, the context menu appears. And whilst we use a context menu often in Mac OS, it's far more widespread in Windows. Let's close that and look at some of the other shortcuts that we can configure for the mouse, the keyboard and the operating system as well while we're here. I'm going to click on the parallels icon in the menu bar and preferences. We're in the shortcut section and as we're covering input devices at the moment, I'll click on mouse shortcuts to see what's available. From here, we can choose the keyboard modifier that we want to use to further signify it's a secondary or right click. If you don't have a trackpad or mouse options configured in Mac system preferences, as we did earlier, then it's crucial you know what these shortcuts are. You can simply click on the field and change the keyboard modifiers. The second option here is for a middle click. And there are some applications that rely on a three button mouse. So if you're using one of those, you're going to need to enable the middle click option and configure a suitable modifier. I'll unclick that and move down to keyboard menu. Now, for those of you who are unaware or just haven't worked on a Windows machine for a while, the keyboards are very different. There are keys on a Windows machine that don't have a Mac alternative. One example is print screen. If you want to take a screenshot quickly on a Windows PC, you tap the print screen button, which copies a screen dump to the clipboard, and you then paste it into your application as normal. Whereas our trusty Macs have got keyboard shortcuts to help us through this. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple related tutorials from Screencasts Online. 
Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple-related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new, up-to-date tutorials each week, as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS-related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the members-only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencasts Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone, and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a Screencasts Online member.